The following program is sponsored by CBN. Coming up, Passion Conference founder Louis Giglio joins us in studio. And then... Never did I ever think that anything would happen to my kids in my own backyard. A cougar attacks. I ran down the stairs. I'm calling, Zach! And a mama bear responds. I just reached my hands into its mouth and I'm just pulling. The heroic story. It was the power of the Holy Spirit that made that animal flee. On today's 700 Club. Welcome, folks, to this edition of the 700 Club. Man, they packed him in in Orlando last night. We'll tell you about what uh, Trump's uh, inaugural uh, address, very important. Uh, we've got a woman, mother, who beat off a cougar. Fabulous story. And we also have, well, it's called Mother's Mud. That's the latest in cosmetic therapy. You ladies can't wait to get a little dirt on your faces because Laurie's going to tell you about it. <laughs> but anyhow, back to Orlando. But after two days in the heat and rain to get into the uh, seat to see President Trump launch his uh, re-election campaign, while the president may have strong support in Florida, while well, those polls still show him trailing the Democrat frontrunner, Charlene Aaron has that. Thousands of enthusiastic supporters packed an Orlando arena as the president officially kicked off his bid for re-election in 2020. I stand before you to officially launch my campaign for a second term. The president touting his accomplishments such as the economy. The unemployment rate is the lowest rate it's been in over 51 years. And foreign policy emphasizing closer relations with Israel. We recognized the true capital of Israel and opened the American embassy in Jerusalem. On immigration, repeating his earlier statement to begin deporting millions of people living here illegally, leading the crowd in what's become a rallying cry for his supporters. And we are building the wall. We're gonna have over 400 miles of wall built by the end of next year. Then he turned to the Democratic field, tagging them as radicals out to destroy the country. No matter what label they use, a vote for any Democrat in 2020 is a vote for the rise of radical socialism and the destruction of the American dream. Senator Bernie Sanders quickly fired back. An hour and a half speech of lies uh, distortions and total absolute nonsense. Frontrunner Joe Biden saying the president's actions and rhetoric are dividing us. The president begins his campaign in the face of tough issues. This week, sending 1,000 troops to the Middle East as tensions rise with Iran. The Islamic regime threatening to take steps towards making a nuclear weapon. Meanwhile, the president is facing criticism from business groups over tariffs on Chinese goods as he negotiates a trade deal. The president says he's making progress. I spoke to President Xi, terrific president, a great leader of China. Spoke to him this morning at length, and we'll see what happens. But we're either going to have a good deal and a fair deal, or we're not going to have a deal at all, and that's okay too. A deal with China could provide a timely economic boost in key battleground states where the president is trailing in the polls. Florida is considered a must-win state for Democrats and Republicans. While Trump won the Sunshine State in 2016, a Quinnipiac University poll released Tuesday shows Biden leading the president there by nine points and Sanders up by six. Charlene Aaron, CBN News. Well, in another news, this is a shocking development as the uh, acting Secretary of Defense has said he will not stand for the uh, full appointment because he does not want, well, the issues of his family. Apparently, his wife was abusive and he appeared with a bloody nose. His son did terrible things, went after the wife who had been abusing him with a baseball bat. It is a story you wouldn't believe. John Jessup has more on that. 
Well, Pat, Acting Secretary of Defense Patrick Shanahan is withdrawing from the confirmation process. This after reports of allegations of domestic abuse in the family. According to news reports in 2010, police arrested his then wife after being called to the family home and finding Shanahan with a bloody nose. In 2011, police were called again after his 17 year old son got into a fight with his mother and hit her with a baseball bat. Shanahan said continuing the confirmation process would force his children to relive past trauma. The current Secretary of the Army, Mark Esper, will take his place as acting head of DOD. Well, former White House Communications Director Hope Hicks is slated to appear before the House Judiciary Committee today. The committee subpoenaed her to answer questions about several incidents of potential obstruction of justice by President Trump in the Mueller report, including the firings of former Attorney General Jeff Sessions and former FBI Director James Comey. Today's hearing takes place behind closed doors. The White House claims Hicks does not have to testify about her time in the Trump administration, informing committee chairman Gerald Nadler that the president has instructed her not to answer any questions about her White House service. Well, images of a shaky Angela Merkel are raising questions about the German chancellor's health. Merkel, seen here visibly unsteady and shaking as she waits to meet Ukraine's new president in Berlin. She blamed the hot weather and dehydration for her condition. Later, Merkel said she felt better after drinking several glasses of water. Well, Family Research Council President Tony Perkins is the new chair of the U.S. Commission on International Religious Freedom. His first act, taking up the case of 16-year-old Leah Sherabu, a young Nigerian Christian girl declared a slave for life by Muslim militants. Leah's mom traveled to Washington this week on a mission to secure her freedom. Rebecca Sherabu has little to smile about, grieving a loss no parent should bear. My name is Rebecca. I come here to plead the government of U.S. to please help me for her release. Her daughter, Leah, was kidnapped at school along with 109 other girls, taken by Boko Haram, a deadly Nigerian terror group with ties to ISIS. The Nigerian government negotiated the release of each girl except for Leah. Her captors wouldn't let her go unless she renounced her Christian faith. At just 14, Leah refused. She chose faith over freedom when it would have been so easy to cave. For six months, Leah's mom had no idea whether she was dead or alive until August 2018, when Boko Haram released this photo and a recording of Leah pleading for her life. <laughs> So from August, from February to August, you had no information? No information. What was it like when you saw the video with your daughter wearing the hijab and on the mat? Immediately I saw it, I just started crying and weeping. And it's not just Rebecca's. Tears flow throughout this West African nation. About 2,000 Nigerians died last year in a dispute portrayed by the media as a clash between farmers and herdsmen. We're here to, to let the world know what's happening because they keep this narrative of herder farmer conflict. It's not that way at all. Instead, Alhiri Mugaji and Mercy Mesimari call it a religious campaign to oppress Christians. They're speaking out with great risk to their own lives because Fulani Muslims now run the country. Someone has to say what is really happening. And if God says you, it's you, then you can't run away from the responsibility of being the one to talk. This really is a jihad that is raging in Nigeria and that we are ramping up to a genocide. Now 16, Leah's brave stand is encouraging others. As a Christian, I'm not afraid. I want to stand for my feet on behalf of my people. Even pushing her own mother, who's never once left her village, to travel thousands of miles to the United States, desperately seeking help. Donald Trump, she done it again. <laughs> I have come to plead with your government, to plead with President Donald Trump. My son's name is Donald. So, Donald Trump, it's a song. I need him to help me have my daughter released. <laughs> Pain and prayer fueling this mom's passion to be reunited with her daughter. Pat, a courageous young girl at 14, she was taken. She's now 16, celebrating two birthdays in captivity. Well, we need to pray for these people 
you know, they've had this kind of thing going on before. You remember those so-called Ebos that were so highly educated, and yet uh, the Muslim majority uh, wanted to exterminate them, and there was this terrible genocide against the Ebos. Uh, we back again, and uh, actually, I, I was under the impression that Nigeria had elected a Christian as its leader, and I, I guess the uh, Muslims have come back into power. But anybody that says that this is a religion of priests doesn't know what they're talking about. These people are vicious killers, and when they get an authority, they will el el eliminate and exterminate those who disagree with them. At least that's what's happening in Nigeria. And we need to pray for these people, that, that brave girl who was willing to say, I'm not going to denounce Jesus, even if it means I have to stay in captivity. Wendy? God bless her. Well, coming up, the surprising way to healthy looking skin. You have to get a little dirty. We have to learn to love these good bugs. That's really the secret to having beautiful, glowing, radiant skin. We'll tell you the do's and don'ts needed for you to look your best after this. Oh, well, we got a story for you, Mother's Mud. Ladies, this is the answer to beautiful skin. If you or somebody you know suffers from a skin problem, the reason is that they may lack good bacteria. We've been telling you about the benefits of good bacteria in your gut, but our wonderful health reporter is breaking a new story. There's something that those little fellows will do to help our skin as well. Here it is. Dad. Danielle Fleming can finally feel comfortable about going out and enjoying life. For years, embarrassing skin problems caused her to avoid people. Because I was having issues with acne all around my mouth area, um, kind of patches of dry spots and red bumps. And it was just, it was terrible. Definitely. She's not alone. Skin conditions like acne, eczema, and premature aging are on the increase. And you'll likely be surprised at the reason. Recently, scientists discovered our obsession with cleanliness can do more harm than good. Too often, things like antibacterial soaps and harsh scrubbing tools can wipe out the good bacteria on our skin. You gotta get a little dirty to have beautiful glowing skin. Celebrity dermatologist Whitney Bow says groundbreaking research over the last couple of years uncovered our skin microbiome. A lot of people don't realize that our skin is covered in trillions of microscopic organisms. So right after you get out of the shower in the morning, when you think you are clean, your body is covered. Again, trillions, and they are just swarming through your eyelashes and diving into your belly button. In her book, Dirty Looks, Dr. Bo explains how these tiny warriors fight chronic skin conditions. We have to learn to love these good bugs. If we learn how to nurture and protect these healthy strains of bacteria on our skin, that's really the secret to having beautiful, glowing, radiant skin. She says over-cleansing can destroy good bacteria. Before I felt the need to take a shower in the morning, take a shower at night, scrub my skin, um, have a loofah, use the antibacterial soap, you know, suds up really well. I would even rub alcohol on it because I thought it would dry it up and it would get rid of it. Measures like these trigger an immune response, which can lead to inflammation. I'm not telling people to stop showering. You know, I'm certainly not recommending going to sleep with your makeup on. But I do think that there's something to be said for be taking a very gentle approach when it comes to cleansing our skin. While step one is preserving the good bacteria already on our skin, Dr. Bo says step two involves adding to that number with topical probiotics. Right now, you're spraying live bacteria, and actually this brand has found a way 
to find these live bacteria that no longer exist on our skin. So through evolution, through our very hygienic practices over the years, we've killed off these good bugs. In addition to putting probiotics directly on the skin, Dr. Bo recommends some pre- and postbiotic items to fortify the skin's microbiome. There's just a huge surge right now. All of these new products are hitting the market, and this trend is not going anywhere. It's just going to climb exponentially. That's not all. While growing good bacteria on the outside, Dr. Bo reminds us to also nurture the inside. An unhappy gut leads to unhappy skin. She so says a diet high in sugar destroys the good bacteria in our gut, which magnified Danielle's problem. I was addicted to cupcakes and cookies and chocolate. Um, and anything that was in the house that I was feeding, you know, my kids as a treat, I was also eating myself. However, avoiding those foods and consuming good bacteria can clear things up within days. So I stopped eating as much processed sugar, um, white breads, and I started adding different things to my diet. So I started taking probiotics. I started drinking um, the kombucha that was recommended. I started eating sauerkraut, weirdly enough, because that seems to do a lot also for your skin. So while skin problems are on the rise, they can be reversed by improving the bacteria balance on our skin and in our gut. Laurie Johnson's here with us. Laurie, you look absolutely radiant. Are you putting that mother's dirt on your face? <laughs> huh? Thank you. I have to say that's the makeup department, so I can't oh, take yeah. credit for it. You should see me without my makeup, which would never happen. But, uh, yeah, the, the stuff is called mother dirt. This is actually live bacteria. It's perishable. It lasts for about a month. Right. And the actual bacteria is called nitrosomona neutropha. And this bacteria is in dirt. This is the bacteria that's in dirt. And it used to be all over our skin, but we don't have it anymore because about 100 years ago, we moved inside. And to compound the problem is if we do have it on our skin, we kill it with these antibacterial soaps. Yeah. So if you were walking around in the dirt in your bare feet, you'd get a lot of this good bacteria on your skin. So the key is to get it on there and to keep it on there. Well, really, you were saying God put in the dirt of this earth something that's very beneficial for human beings, and we've washed it off. That's right. And this is the same thing that's going on in our gut. We've talked about this before. There, it's a two-process thing okay. where we, we, we aren't getting the good bacteria like we once did, yeah. and the bacteria that we do have, we're killing with our lifestyle choices. So we need to put the good bacteria in our gut with things like probiotics. We've talked about this many times before. And then we need to nurture them with the prebiotics, feed them the good stuff. Same thing with our skin. This is the good bacteria that we need to spray on our skin. See, just like this. That's just that simple. This is actual live bacteria. And, and you're spraying that on your skin right this second? It does. And what you're supposed to do is spray it on your skin about twice a day. Do it uh, preferably in areas where you sweat uh -huh. because this bacteria eats the ammonia in our sweat. Come on. And <laughs> this is what it does. And it excretes nitrous, nitric oxide yeah. and nitrites that are wonderful. They, they battle the bad bacteria and fight off the bacteria that cause skin problems like acne, rosacea, psoriasis, premature aging, and sensitive skin. How many women have some kind of acne? Is it a big problem? Yes, it's a terrible problem, but men too. Yeah. Rosacea, psoriasis, this redness, that's the inflammation. So this has been shown to reduce skin problems in about a month's time for 35% of the people. And I love this product. There are probably going to be more probiotics like this because now scientists are catching on. But I, I just want to say I, I'm not getting any kind of compensation for this. Yeah. This is just a good product. This is what you find in the dirt. So if you don't want to use this, well, go roll around in the mud. Okay, well, what's that called again? This is called Mother Dirt, and uh, it's called AO, which ammonia oxidizing, because as I mentioned, yeah. it eats up the ammonia so in your sweat. If a woman or a man has, has acne 
or acne scars. You put that stuff on and those little critters start going to work in your face. They sure do. And they neutralize, they soothe, they restore the pH balance. This is stuff that helps your skin, but you also have to keep it alive. And we really need to refrain from using those antibacterial soaps. That's too much. We're over cleansing. We just need regular soap. Wow. Not, and, and also the antibacterial cleansers that we use, you know, to clean our homes. These antibacterial yeah. products, well, as the name just, suggests. You know, so many people, I mean, I, I read some of these books, and it, they've got the lead characters showering every time you turn around. They get up, they take a shower, <laughs> they get ready to go to bed, they take a shower. They, constantly, it's like a big deal. And they, But they, what you're saying is that is killing the good bacteria off their skin. That's right. Regular soap is okay, but it's the antibacterial okay. soap and the over cleansing, like with the loofahs and the crazy cleansing tools that we use, the super scrubbers and things like that. We need to just be more moderate. Well, now, what if there are acne scars, there's actually scars in their face? Well, will these little critters actually begin to change that? It, it could help. It's definitely worth a try. It's not a miracle product. And for more information on this and other skin issues, we would invite our viewers to go to our website, cbnnews.com. Right. And in fact, my entire interview with Dr. Bo is on our website. She's my guest on Healthy Living. So if people go to our website and go to the show's link, you can click on that and watch Healthy Living. You contacted her uh, in Chappaqua, New York, and she invited you to come up and you sat around in her pool and enjoyed lunch and she shared all this stuff with you. She is wonderful and she's as knowledgeable as she is beautiful and she is as beautiful on the inside as she yeah. is on the outside. She's really a great dermatologist and I feel blessed that she shared her information with us. Those uh, probiotics you've got in that little box, uh, that's Garden of Life. Right. And is that for men or women or both? Actually, this particular kind happens to be the kind that I take. This particular brand is formulated by your friend and mine, Dr. David Perlmutter, yeah, right. who our viewers probably know because we've featured him so many times on the 700 Club. He's the gut guy. Yeah. He's the gut guy. And so these are wonderful probiotics. And Dr. Bo talks about the importance of good gut health for our skin as well. And she talks about the gut brain skin connection and by the way danielle whom i featured in the story who had the terrible acne and now she's gorgeous yeah. when she stopped eating sugar and started taking care of her gut her depression went away yeah. well this this gut biome is so important uh it uh, there's so many diseases autoimmune diseases that result from, from a, a, a bad gut, right? A leaky gut, leaky that's gut. right, because when we destroy our gut lining, these pro we get, they get big holes in the gut lining, yeah. and these important things go out of those holes and into our bloodstream, and our immune system recognizes them as foreign invaders and attacks them, that's an autoimmune disease. Give me the names of four or five of those autoimmune diseases that are caused because we don't have the appropriate gut biome. Well, we're talking about things like muscular sclerosis. Okay. Um, uh, How about I, Parkinson's? Not so much. So much not so much. Yeah, yeah. But, but we know that the gut microbiome and having a strong gut well, the other is, affects our entire health. A bunch of things called autoimmune diseases. So. Give us some of them. Uh, well, it's a MS, and a couple of the names escape my mind right at the moment. Well, but uh, How about depression and things like that? Right. Depression is definitely tied into our gut without question, and our emotions and our brain. Depression isn't necessarily an autoimmune disease where your immune system mm -hmm. is attacking your own body, but... It's definitely the, the a TV like is literally jammed up with advertising for medication that will, will, will address these particular c conditions. And they don't say a one word about gut biome, mm -hmm. but they should. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, you talk to people who have improved their gut microbiome, and they'll tell you that their mood improved right. drastically. If somebody wants to get that, I know you say you're not being compensated, neither mm -hmm. am I, but, but where do they get it? Because the, the, the manufacturer is called Mother Dirt, and they can find information on our website, cbnnews.com. spray that on their face and spray it on their arms. and Right. And, and, and the instructions are spray it on before you sweat. <laughs> okay. And you know what? We sweat at night. 
Yeah. So that you're supposed to spray it on before nighttime in the areas where you sweat, like, you know, under your arms yeah. and on your scalp and on your hands and things like that because it likes to eat our sweat. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Well, you get pretty intimate with the Lori on these things, but uh, like it or not, this is we're trying to help you. So, Lori, thank you so much. And again, if you want to get this stuff, it's it's on her website or Lori. CBNnews.com. CBNnews.com. God bless you. Thank you. God bless you. Well, up next, a mother hears a commotion in her backyard, runs out, and she finds a cougar attacking her little boy. It's a parent's worst nightmare. Your heart just sinks into your stomach. In a moment's time, I knew that, God, I need your help. See why that cooler was no match for Mama Bear when we come back. You know, God gives dedicated mothers unbelievable strength. And here's a story about Chelsea Bromley, who heard a strange sound. Her mom intuition kicked into action. Within seconds, she threw herself in between her seven-year-old son and the gnashing teeth of a vicious cougar. And that mom, oh, it made international headlines, but she beat that cougar. Here's the story. We live on Vancouver Island uh, in a small town, Lake Cowichan, for approximately four years now. My husband is Kevin, and we have five of our own kids together, and I also have a stepson. When you live here, it's you have a lot of privileges because you're in a beautiful forested area. It's not uncommon to see deer, raccoon, bears, our community is very closed off. We have a safe environment here. Never did I ever think that anything would happen to my kids in my own backyard. The thought never crossed my mind. This was an average Friday afternoon, around 3.40ish. Yeah, and Kevin was working. But the children are doing everything they normally do make the popcorn and put the popcorn bowl onto the porch. And Zach, he just felt like he needed to have some time to himself. He was headed to his fort. And he loves his fort. He worked very hard at it, and I did know that he was in the backyard. I just, um, doing normal things, the normal things I do every single day. So when I was in my laundry room, I heard the sheet metal on the neighbor's fence banging. And I thought, sounds like a child's kicking that metal fence. I knew something was wrong. I went outside and I could hear this, this banging. Sounds like he's trying to get something off of him. I ran down the stairs, and I'm calling, Zach, Zach, and I knew he's in that area, so I just leaped over there, turned the corner. It's a parent's worst nightmare. I see this cougar latched onto my child. It took me a moment to process what on earth is happening. Your heart just sinks into your stomach. I needed to try and get control of what was physically harming my child, which was the cougar's mouth. And in, in a moment's time, I knew that I needed to pray. I knew that, God, I need your help. I just reached my hand into its mouth and I'm just pulling, okay. God, he's the only one at this point who's going to be able to save my son. 
I believe in Jesus. I believe in his power. I believe in his strength. I know that God is going to save my kid. And about three sentences into my prayer, the cougar just unlatched its mouth off of him and it just slinked away. I scooped him up and I just ran in the house and I said, get everyone, get in the house, get in the house. He had an MRI, but there's no brain damage or no fractures to his skull and no broken bones. So deep lacerations is all we had to deal with and the wounds healed. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> you may have heard of this story. It's gone international. A mama bear versus cougar. A mother in Canada went toe-to-toe -to -toe with a cougar. Is being credited with saving her son's life. When the first news people arrived, I thought, oh, okay, this hit the news. And that's as far as I thought. When it went on to Good Morning America, I was really surprised. The reason I wanted to allow it was so that the right story got out there. We give God 100% credit. It wasn't me who opened its mouth. It was the power of the Holy Spirit that made that animal flee. Zach today, is, I would say he's doing quite well. Um, I know the Lord has really helped heal him emotionally. I tell him that God saved him and I tell him that the Lord intervened through this experience, he can see the power of the Holy Spirit working and the importance of calling on God, not just in times of need, but in all times, having a relationship with the Lord. They say about truth being stranger than fiction, and I don't think a fiction writer could have come up with something like that, but that mother, she called on the name of the Lord. And the name of the Lord, the Bible says, is a high tower. The righteous run to it and are saved. Wow, Wendy. And he looked, he looked perfectly fine, like he didn't have any... None any, whatsoever, yeah. yeah. And I, I guess that just happened not too long ago, so... Well, it was a couple months ago. Couple, it was incredible. What a okay. miracle. Well, we just heard that story about an amazing mom. Now we want to turn our attention on dads. Still ahead, Louis Giglio tells us about the importance of fathers and shares what we need to know as sons and daughters. Welcome back to Washington for this CBN News Break. The streaming service VidAngel has been ordered to pay more than $62 million to four Hollywood film studios. VidAngel allows users to filter explicit content from movies like sex, violence, and bad language. A judge ruled Monday the company violated copyright laws by streaming filtered versions of the movies. VidAngel plans to appeal. While an Alabama native is drawing attention after mowing the lawns of military veterans in all 50 states, Delta Airlines flew Rodney Smith to Alaska and Hawaii so he can, could complete his mission to serve. Smith tweeted a picture on his flight. Delta thanked him for serving veterans, quote, in this incredible way. Smith has a mowing company called Raising Men Lawn Care Service, which helps people who are unable to mow their own lawns. He started the company after asking God to use him as a vessel. Well, you can always get the latest from CBN News by going to our website at CBNNews.com. Pat and Wendy will be back with more of the 700 Club right after this. Pastor Louis Giglio has been ministering to young people for over 20 years, and he's seen a common theme across so many of their stories, heartbreak, broken families. In fact, today's youth are being called the fatherless generation. In the face of this epidemic, Pastor Giglio has an important message. No matter your story, you are not forsaken. One in four children in the U.S. is living in a home without a father. Louis Giglio, pastor and leader of the Passion Conferences, which have gathered over 20 million youth from around the world, wants you to know that your experience with your earthly father doesn't have to dictate your relationship with your heavenly father. 
Every one of us long to have the blessing, the love, the acceptance, the approval, the involvement of our fathers in our lives. In his book, Not Forsaken, Louis shares that regardless of your past, God is present now, waiting to love and bless you with an amazing future. And Pastor Louis Giglio is here with us now. Welcome back to the 700 Thanks, Club, Wendy. Pastor. It's always great to be with you. When you talk about a primal craving for dad, what is that and why can't we get it from mom? Yeah, you know, moms are amazing. Let's get that straight right away. Sure. We are here because of what moms do for us. Amen. They give us life and they keep us alive. But even when we're little kids, remember the summer day at the swimming pool when dad showed up, he got off work or yeah. came from fishing or the golf outing. And when every kid sees dad at the pool, it's daddy, watch me. I'm gonna do my best jump, my best dive. Dad, watch, watch, watch. And all we wanna know is daddy, did you see me? Mm. I think it's woven into our hearts at birth this longing to have the blessing, the love, the approval, the participation, the blessing of our Father over our lives. And it's even there on into our adult lives as well. It really is. I still ask my dad, did you see the show? Yep. <laughs> um, you know, we just marked Father's Day, of course. And, um, you know, a lot of people did not have that relationship, good relationship yeah. with their dad. And they might be saying, I don't even need that. But you say, Mm, you do need it. Yeah, you know, one of the things that uh, stunned me when I was writing the book, I found a study in Psychology Today by this psychologist, and she studied 75 high-achieving women. They were crushing it in their careers, in their families, in all the endeavors of their lives. She said, I was surprised that all 75 of them still viewed their accomplishments through the lens of their father's opinion. You're kidding. Wow. So we can't just close the door and say, well, I'm past that. It doesn't matter. I don't need it. I don't want it. It, it drives us either to our successes or to our failures in some cases. Well, in your new book, Not Forsaken, you examine several types of fathers. Tell us about that. Yeah, well, we just talk about some of our earthly fathers, the absent fathers. One of them we talk about absent because of divorce or disinterest or disease or death. Working too much. Either. Or dysfunction. Yeah, like dad's just too busy to be around. And if you have an absent father, then that leaves a gap and a void in your life. We talk about the abusive dad. Mm. And um, in these six fathers, we also talk about the empowering dad, though, because a lot of the dads out there are pretty amazing and they're doing a great job of passing on that blessing to their kids. But none of us had a perfect earthly dad. Well, that's true, because none of us are perfect. But you say that you had a pretty good dad. In fact, he even designed the logo <laughs> for Chick-fil-A that we still see today. Uh, everybody loves Chick-fil-A. Uh, and yet he made a confession later in life that you said totally rocked your world. Yeah, my dad was disabled late in his life. And so he started saying things to me from a level that he had never communicated before. And I don't think if he wasn't disabled, he probably would have never said. Right. But I learned late in life that my dad never got his father's blessing. Wow. My grandfather died when I was a baby. I never knew him, but my dad never had that love, acceptance, and approval from Louis Giglio the first. I'm the third. And he told me one day when I was sharing the love of God with my dad toward the end of his life, he said, no one ever loved me mm. and no one ever wanted me. And I don't believe God wants me either. Oh no. And that just floored me. We were sitting in a hospital room and I just couldn't hardly get a breath. But you know what I realized, Wendy? I realized for the very first time that my dad wasn't just a father, he was also a son. Right. A son who'd never gotten a father's blessing in his life. And I had a father's blessing because yeah. I have a heavenly father who was pouring out that blessing on my life. And I realized I could do the miracle. I could send the blessing back up the family tree that my dad never got from his father yeah. and I could send the love up the tree in the acceptance and I could send that blessing back up to my dad. Yeah. And for the last few years of his life, I had the privilege of doing that. Yeah. Um, but man, you know, we need to take one step back sometimes and just see our dads as sons. And I think it doesn't erase things. We're not talking about, you know, sweeping things under the rug. It just gives us a new grace it really to does. understand what they've been through in their life. It really does. Well, how does our view of our dads, our fathers affect our view of the heavenly father? Well, it can be a hurdle for sure. If uh, your dad walked out on you, you might think God's going to walk out on you. Yeah. If your dad was all about performance, like if you make the A, you get the hug. You know, <laughs> you score the touchdown. I'll tell you, I love you. But if you don't, you're gonna have to earn it a different way. You might think God's like that, 
But here's the beauty of the book and the beauty of the message. God is not the reflection of our earthly dad. He's not just a bigger version right. of our earthly dad. He's the perfect version <laughs> of our earthly dad. He's, He's everything father. we long for yeah. in a dad and even more. Why was it so revolutionary when Jesus referred to God as the father? Yeah, so Jesus teaches us that he's creator, sovereign, Lord, king, mighty. But the thing Jesus teaches us most 189 times in the gospels is that Jesus is the father. So he takes this eternal sovereign king right. and he puts him into a relationship with us that we can put our arms around, that we can know we have a place, we belong there as sons and daughters of this perfect father. And that he is lavishes a, his love on us. Absolutely. Yeah. It's like a Niagara Falls worth of <laughs> blessing coming down on our lives every single day. And that's the gospel. Not that we believe something necessarily or join something. It's that we were born again to brand new life as sons and daughters of a perfect father. What if somebody's watching right now and they're just like, I'm just, I'm still not getting this. My dad was either absent or was so horrible and I desperately want what this pastor is talking about. How do they, first they would need to read your book, <laughs> Not Forsaken, but how do they get that? Well, it starts at the cross. And I think for us to believe that we can trust God, which is, that's the issue really. Can I trust God? I couldn't trust my dad. Right. Can I trust God? How can I know that I can believe this message? Well, the cross is proof. It's history. And it is the game-changing marker for all of our lives. That's where God gave His Son and where His Son was forsaken. Jesus said at the end of His life, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And the answer is, He was forsaken so we could be forgiven and be born again to brand new life as sons and daughters of God. Well, this may be the most important book you read this year or your entire life, for that matter. It's uh, For more information on uh, Louis' book, Not Forsaken, it's available in stores nationwide, and it's even a great belated Father's Day gift. Uh, Louis, God bless you. Thank, Thank you, you so, so much, much for this latest book. We, we love it. Well, still to come, Pat weighs in on the issues that matter to you. Kay asks, can a word of knowledge be meant for more than one person? Another round of your questions, honest answers coming up, so don't go away. Welcome back to the 700 Club. We want to tell you about Juana. Like most grandmothers, Grandma Juana dotes on her young granddaughter. Not long ago, she was supporting herself and her grandchild on just a few dollars a day. Then her small business started to fail and Grandma had nowhere to turn for help. Grandma Juana loves the time she spends with her four-year-old granddaughter, Tang Tai. We feel very happy as we work together. Tang Tai helps me keep our house clean. Tang Tai's mom abandoned her after she was born, and Grandma has been raising her ever since. I always have Grandma before I go to sleep. I love her very much. Grandma Juana prepared food at home and transported it in a rusty cart with a flat tire to a spot along the road where she sold it. On a good day, she used to earn about $6. Lately, she's lost most of her customers because of the condition of the food and the equipment. My customers complained that the food was cold and dirty. I said, I'm so sorry. I don't have money to buy new equipment. I felt so ashamed and discouraged. We went to the market. I asked Grandma to buy some fruit, but she said no money. So CBN's Orphan's Promise gave Grandma some new pots with lids to keep the dust and the insects out of the food. Then we bought her a new cart to transport the food to the roadside stand. We gave her a new grill and gas stove to cook and keep the food warm. And finally, we helped her plant a vegetable garden at home so she'll have fresh ingredients to sell and to eat. My customers say that my new cart and equipment look clean and my food tastes delicious. Grandma now has more customers than before and her income has tripled. Tang Tai no longer goes hungry. My neighbors tell me they've never seen me and my granddaughter so happy. Orphan's Promise helped us and loved us. Thank you. 
That's sweet. Isn't it wonderful what you can do with just 65 cents a day, $20 a month? You can change someone's entire life, not just their life, but the little granddaughter and even the whole village is now is eating better because you cared. If you would like to partner and help us help people all over the world and right here at home, as well as our military folks. It's so easy. Go to your phones right now. The number's on your screen, 1-800-700-7000. You can log on to CBN.com and just click on Give. It's a great way to give as well. When you do that, we want to bless you back with Pat's dynamic new teaching called The Plan, Eight Keys to Understanding God's Will for Your Life. This is an amazing teaching that he sits down with Scott Ross and does. And uh, I love it, and I know you're going to love it as well. So please go to your phones and do that. And it's time for email. Now let's do it. Let's, let's get right it. into it. All right, I'm all set. <laughs> Kay says, I saw a word of knowledge on your show and claimed it for myself. About a month later, it came true. Then I saw a report on your show about another woman who claimed the same word and also was healed. Can words be meant for more than one person? Well, you know, if, if somebody gives an invitation to accept the Lord, uh, it doesn't necessarily apply to one. I've spoken to large crowds of people and thousands have received that same word. So the answer is, uh, you know, if, if it applies to you, claim it and God will bless you. If there are more than others claiming it, there's plenty of God to go around. So don't, don't, don't worry about it, all right? I like that. Plenty of God to go around. Amen. <laughs> all, right. all right. Lisa says, help. I have metastatic breast cancer, which has spread to my liver and bones. I scream and cry and moan in pain most days. It's torture, absolute torture. I've been a Christian for most of my life. I am crushed. I was a wonderful mother. What did I do to deserve this? Mm. Oh, look, I hate cancer. I think God hates cancer. I, I've been at the bedside of people who've died of cancer. Uh, the pain is unbearable. Uh, you know, I am a cancer survivor. I had prostate cancer. My wife had breast cancer, she had a mastectomy, I had my prostate removed, and so I don't have cancer anymore, but why does cancer come? There are many reasons that people get cancer. We have all sorts of carcinogens out in our society that cause cancer. Uh, if we have a lack of nutrients in our body, they will be substitute to cancer. There's so many factors, and I don't think we need to attribute into the sickness to God. But uh, all I can say is we can pray and, and, and ask God to heal your cancer and, and give you release from the pain. But don't think God put that on you. God hates cancer and God does not give people cancer ever, all right? Yeah, we, her name is Lisa. And Lord, Lisa, we just agree with, with you right now and our yeah. viewers agree that God is going to do a miracle in your life. And we, we just um, bless you right now in Jesus' name. Thank all right, Karen says, I need some clarification on a verse in the Old Testament, Isaiah 53, 5. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. By his stripes, we are healed. I know the definition of chastisement per the dictionary, but chastisement doesn't make much sense to me in relation to our peace. Oh, um, that's a description of, of what happened to Jesus. He was beaten and he had 39 stripes. And there are many who've said, well, each stripe represented some kind of a sickness. Uh, he wasn't chastised because he did something wrong. He was bearing your sins and my sins, and he was beaten for you on account of what you did and what I did. You know, there's that song that was, you know, he took the fall for me. And I think that's, he was punished because of our sin. The Lord laid on him the iniquity of us all. So that's what I'm, I, you have to understand. And the whipping, the nails, the crucifixion, everything that was done for Jesus, on Jesus, was as a representative of sinful mankind that needed to be made right with God. All right, have no. All right, I think we have time for one more. All right, real quick. Uh, this viewer says, if God created wine and also the materials which drugs are made from, like pot, why are drugs wrong and why do Christians believe drinking is wrong? <laughs> well, it's a question of, you know, it, it said wine is a mocker and strong drink is raging. Uh, 
you know, it's fermented grapes and fermented wheat and barley and rye and so forth that caused the problem. And uh, uh, it, why did he do it? I mean, I don't think that the earth has things and their medicinal value and there's all kinds of good things that can come about through these plants that God's made. If they're misused by people, it's not God's fault. But we leave you with today's power minute from the Psalms. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. Hey, tomorrow we've got Daryl Strawberry talking about his ascendancy and his decline. It's quite a story. You don't want to miss it. See you tomorrow. God bless you. Bye-bye.